I only have one question. Who brought Jerry Garcia back from the dead and turned him, turned him into a private attorney general? <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining Attorney Audits Agitators. I'm your host, Joe Palmetto, Joe the Lawyer. Today, we're going to watch a video. It's about 15 minutes long. Feel free to skip. Of a Jerry Garcia lookalike arguing with the police over having his vehicle towed when he was trespassing. He pulls out all kinds of sovereign citizen tricks, and you guessed it, he ends up in handcuffs. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. Also, I wrote a book on sovereign citizens. The description, uh, <laughs> the link is in the description below. Buy it on Amazon for $9.99. Now, before we watch this video and have a bunch of fun, raise your glass, your cup in the air for attorney audits. I'm drinking Dunkin' Donuts iced tea. Sip with me. It tastes better when we sip together. Cheers. All right, let's watch Jerry Garcia get arrested. I'd like to speak with the superior directly. I would like to speak with the superior directly, sir. I want to make sure my constitutional rights are respected through this whole process of review. Okay, well, I'm here to protect the constitution. Absolutely. So who is the supervisor, though, just so I can direct my attention to the proper channel of authority? For no supervisor here. No supervisor. Okay. So, my RV is primary residence of my primary dwelling, okay. my sole domicile. It was taken two days ago. I immediately picked up the phone and called and filed a report for Grand Theft of South Austin which Officer Perkins responded. He refused to provide any incident report or any investigation, any information regarding my RV and a call to be removed from private property. With that being said, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a lawyer. I've been studying this whole weekend. I have notes, so if you'll just give me a moment to go through this. Um, I just delivered a certificate of service to the tow yard to put them on notice of a violation of federal crime. I'm acting as a private attorney general right now investigating this matter and also filing the report. I didn't get as far as requesting him to retract from the crime that he was an accessory of because he asked me to vacate the property. Okay. So I removed myself immediately telling him Can you furnish me that coat? I don't have to, I'm telling you. Listen here, sir. With all due respect, this is why I requested a supervisor. Uh, this is Miss Prison of a felony refusing to take a court in regards to the felony. And uh, you're acting as an attorney practicing law unlicensed right now, which is also a crime. And you are to solely take a criminal report. In regards to that, hold on one second, sir. I'm not trying to argue with you. I'm trying to educate you. Now, the Supreme Court had ruled that it is your sole duty to take a criminal report in regards. And if I am falsifying any information in regards to this report, you will be liable to arrest me. Now, with the state law and federal law, considering I'm going to educate you not at one point at any point in time was I made aware that I was trespassing therefore it is a crime in regards to the removal of that 
vehicle from that property because nobody had made anybody aware that a crime's been committed. I'm going to elaborate for you in a clear instance. One second, sir. No, he, he's talking. You stop talking, okay? So I really works. wanted to speak with the supervisor so I didn't get gang-banged by a bunch of people who didn't study law. Uh, do you know the person that owned the property you bought on? Uh, it's not owned by a private individual. It's owned by a private corporation. Did that corporation give you permission to park there? This property has been generally open and accessible to the public in the neighborhood for generations, as I can testify myself to that. Was it there when you are there? no posting signs whatsoever that would deem any portion of that property not open and accessible to the general public. Or the public good, the private good. Sir, this is misprison of a felony if you're refusing to take a report. This is why I seriously wanted the supervisor to come down here and respect my constitutional rights. What is your name, sir? Deputy Weddle. Deputy Weddle. Weddle? Okay, and your Deputy name, Moore. sir? Deputy Moore. Two O's. Deputy Moore. I'm sorry. Can you spell that for you? Uh, no, sir. I can, I can finagle that from there. Sure. Uh, with that being said, Violations of U.S. Code and of the Constitution are as follows. Violation of the KKK Act, which is the Three Quarters Act, the RICO Act, the Homestead Act, 18 U.S. 241 and 242, and an attempt to extort me for money when I have no contract with them. No contract, no notice, no contract. Therefore, that is a violation of 1961. Yeah, you call the FBI with I did. I did. And they refused, claiming it was civil. However, that is another instance where they are... Sorry. Misprison of a felony and practicing law without a license. They cannot tell me it's civil when I'm filing a criminal report with all the information in regards to such. A violation of Title 14, 1986 and also the Eighth Amendment. The grounds that I have for this criminal matter are as follows. You are not to decide that, sir. You are not the judge. You are here to take a criminal report, nothing more. No notice was provided to vacate. That was my sole home and sole dwelling and primary residence that was stolen, along with attempted extortion. The Castle Doctrine and the Homestead Act gives me the express right to occupy and possess and defend my sole dwelling immediately. I'm going to talk to you. Yeah, do that. With that being said, I would request your well, supervisor where was, where down was your trailer here park immediately. Yet? Please call your supervisor down here immediately. Let me ask you a question. I asked you to call your supervisor down. Up. It is your job to respect my yeah, rights and wishes, yeah, considering yeah. you are misprisoning a felony right now. Sir, sir. violating my rights, sir. Sir, right. sir what was your trailer park here? It was parked um, far down from the pump house off of Vaughn Street, where the bridge is. All right, well, that's going to be retained. Uh, of take course, but take yes, sir. They are that, that, a criminal accessory. Sir, I know, but the sir, evidence listen. of the crime is here. The crime the, scene the, is here. It needs when to you be get handled. finished talking, I'll explain. Well, I have to teach you guys. You don't have to teach me nothing. I do. You guys do not study law, and it's the equivalent to a kitchen hiring a head chef who's never peeled an orange or held a knife or entered a kitchen in their whole this life. This ain't got nothing to do with a kitchen. It absolutely no, does. Sir. No, sir. I the, gave you a reference in regards well, to how the talk. similarity is there. Now you go ahead, sir. What okay. do you have to say? The town of South Boston is the people that were, were responsible for towing your vehicle. No, they were not, sir. If they were, there would be a report number as far as an incident well, report or call log report, and they would have paperwork well, in regards to such. If Officer Perkins conspired to withhold evidence while that RV was removed by a private party, he is also involved and will be named as a criminal accessory. Okay, okay. But what I'm saying is, South Boston Police Department towed your vehicle. The county don't have it any It left the jurisdiction. It. Yes, it yes. does. And I'm going to teach you about you this, You don't teach me nothing. I'm not? Okay, are you too old to learn new tricks? This is bull. You calling me old now? I still am requesting a supervisor no, on scene. You're going to tell me I'm refused the right for a supervisor to come and take a formal report seriously? Yes, because it's not a formal report. Under, this is not serious. This is not, not serious, act. not a formal report, not a criminal act. No, sir. You studied not. law yourself, correct? 
Did you take the bar, sir? Hmm? Did you take the bar? No. Did you, did you take the ball? I didn't have to take the bar. We, we didn't either. Yeah, and that's a shame because we, we you enforce either. law that you know nothing we about, not. equivalent to hiring a head chef who's never been in the kitchen in his life. We need criminal justice reform because you guys violate rights all the time, miss prison felonies. This is a conspiracy to deprive me of my rights. Because you don't know the law, ignorance is no excuse for not knowing the law. You all being sheriffs, you are, you are solely bound to make sure other officials are held to constitutional jurisdiction and law. Where's your vehicle at, sir? Why don't you ask Franklin's where my home is? Since they I, I, have, I don't know. And they are Do they have it? to a crime. Once they took it, as far as the admission of guilt that I've received, I have no idea where it is. Oh, okay. Could you tell me, Mr. Bush, why I'm being refused a superior? I, I'm, nobody's refusing you. Uh, did you not see him refuse that, an officer? What are you saying? This is being recorded Look, for quality okay. assurance. You know, you're recording this, yes, and, and I'm not in agreement with you recording. Why am I being arrested? You're being arrested. What? I'm sorry. What, why are you detaining me? Why are you detaining me, sir? Why am I being arrested? Why am I being arrested? First thing, law enforcement officers. I'm not impersonating a law enforcement officer. I'm not impersonating a law enforcement officer. Is that your dog? There's a man in paper down there that you wrote. They told him he was under arrest. That's impersonating a police officer. I did not tell him he was under arrest. I said, stay right there. You're going to be placed under arrest. Sir, is that dog your under arrest? No, I did not tell him I was placing him Sir. under arrest. I did not impersonate an officer. I did not offer any information. Sir, is that and this dog right here is witness intimidation. Is that your dog? And this is suppressing my rights. Yes, sir, that is my dog. 21 says, we'll get animal control down here. I want my sister to come pick up my dog, please. The animal control is on its way. It's too late. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's his book bag right there. 25 for checking the video in. So you went in there and act like it was a law enforcement trying to hold on. Yeah. I mean, I ain't trying to tell you what to do, but... Oh, right. I mean, the only thing I was doing was trying to ask him. We ignorant. You know? Yeah, Chris, definitely hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold A dog, you need you to pick up. Ten four, not an aggressive situation. Just to pick up. Ten four. Ten four. I'm about ten minutes out. Thank you. 
evening, sir. Oh, oh here he's in uh, Thomas's car now. He impersonated a police officer. Really? Yeah. I passed him earlier. Did you? And, uh, I didn't see him doing anything. Nothing says a uh, tried, true, licensed, and educated attorney like a full face beard, a Grateful Dead shirt, and arguing your case in a freaking parking lot. Dude, you are not a private attorney general. You are not a lawyer. And unfortunately, you're not a cop either. That's why you're in handcuffs. Let's break down this situation here. It looks like this guy had an RV parked in a parking lot of a private corporation. He tries to argue, oh, a private corporation is not a person. It's a private corporation. It's not a person. I can park here. He tries to argue, oh, I've been parking here for years and years. And it appears that the owner of this parking lot or this little area of land had his vehicle towed. And then Jerry Garcia, the lawyer, is out there arguing with the guy who owns the property or maybe just the maintenance guy on the property. Not really sure. I think there was someone there who was not a cop. Anyway, the sheriff's department is called and a couple of sheriffs arrive on the scene, try to calm this guy down, just try to tell him, look, they were within their rights to have your vehicle towed. You got an RV parked on someone else's property without their permission. And he goes into a whole bunch of sovereign citizen baloney. Uh, let's see what he says. This was my primary dwelling residence domicile in a car. Listen, if your domicile is a car, you cannot park it on someone else's property. You can't do it. You know, there are places you can park RVs at, you can hang out, etc. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Uh, a private company's property that hasn't authorized that use and you haven't paid them for is not one of those places. All right, you are a trespasser. So this guy's out here arguing with these sheriffs, making these legal arguments. You don't know the law. I know the law. Citing probably fake Supreme Court cases. Look, dude. Why don't you file a lawsuit and battle this in court? Why don't you go into court and go after the people who towed your vehicle instead of giving the sheriffs a hard time? Okay, instead of being out there giving the sheriffs a hard time, he asked them at one point to furnish code. <laughs> That's laughable. They don't have to furnish the code. They don't have to cite the law that you're being arrested for, okay? They don't have to do that. And I'll tell you something, law enforcement officers actually know the law usually pretty well. That's actually a large portion of their training. He tells them, I'm not here to argue. I'm here to educate. No, you're arguing, buddy. If you want to educate, go to court and try to educate the judge. We'll see how that does. Or maybe walk your butt back home and educate yourself first. Um, cops don't study the law. Uh, 
you know, again, I believe that he was accused of trespassing. He keeps on asking for a superior, and they're like, it's not coming, it's not coming. I got a kick out of that. Now, the police end up arresting him for impersonating a law enforcement officer. I'm not sure exactly what he said. He threatened to arrest them. Da, 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 da. That's kind of BS, okay? But they wanted to get him the heck out of there. They wanted to get him the heck out of there. They could have just charged him with like a disorderly conduct or something. That would have also given them gr the grounds to detain or arrest him and remove him from the property. Impersonating a law enforcement officer, frankly, is going a little too far. Oh, at one point, he told them he told them uh, that they were impersonating lawyers. He's standing there impersonating a lawyer. <laughs> what do they say? Accuse the other person of the nonsense you're doing? Um, so anyway, I thought that that charge, that particular charge, impersonating a law enforcement officer in this context, I think a judge will probably throw that out. But they needed some reason, some probable cause of some sort of crime to remove him from the property. I think they could have done that with a disorderly conduct or perhaps with trespassing. Um, me, as a criminal defense attorney, I'd fight that law enforcement impersonator, uh, impersonating law enforcement officer charge, uh, and I think I would beat it. The saddest part of this whole thing is the guy's out here getting arrested while he's got his dog chained up, and now the dog's going to have to go to uh, to to you know animal control, and someone's going to have to pick it up. Like, don't be a jackass when you have other people or other animals that you have to take care of. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. That standing on that property yelling at the sheriff is the wrong place to fight that battle. Not that you had a good argument anyway, most likely your sovereign citizen Jerry Garcia goofball, okay? But that is not the place to do it, all right? So thank you everybody for joining Attorney Audits Agitators. I'm Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer. I wrote a book on sovereign citizens. The link is in the description below, $9.99 on Amazon. Go ahead and pick that up. If you like my content, like, subscribe, comment, and share. I hope you enjoyed this laugh with me. Have a great Saturday.